internet people. Hey. <laughs> Lena here, and today you will get to have a chance to look at my Oracle deck, which trolled many peeps at the team leagues and stuff. A deck built just so I could keep up with Phil's Jewel, uh, Jewel Knight. I, I admit that with absolutely zero shame. <laughs> I was playing all kinds of th other things and being it took a few builds to get to where this was, didn't it? Really? I was being so annoyed because I couldn't keep up. Everything was too slow, so I needed something that worked at a much greater pace. And this is what I've come up with, thanks to a bit of help from the t from the team. Team. We even like saying the word team. Anyway, without quoting too much IT crowd, so as you yeah. can see, the starter is Little Witch Lulu. There's some, some classic stuff going on here. Um, so, uh, her skill is when another of your grade 3 or greater Oracle Think Tank is placed on the Vanguard Circle, you may call this to rear guard. And when you do, uh, you can Soul Blast 2 and draw a card. So, the, the, the deck generally kind of starts a bit slowly, but as soon as you hit turn 3, you start going off and having the good times. Yes. And she's how you start. As for the triggers, we, we're, we're, we're nice. And by nice, I mean not nice. Because here's um, his psychic bird out of, out, of, out of four, and then we're like, yeah, there's Ginger, there's Paisley Magus, there's Assault Dive Eagle, there's Nike. Oh, look, it's 12. We don't need draw triggers where, where we're going. Because um, we draw enough from the actual cards we use, so we just crit people in the face. And also, unlike the Tsukiyomi uh, version of this deck, we don't rely on the stack, so we run recyclable heal, heal triggers because we just want to annoy our opponents more by healing for days. So I run four Sphere Magus. So that's it. It's the first time, I think possibly the first time I've ever run 12 crits, but this is the first deck that's truly warranted it. So, And in this deck, it feels good. So that's that. Um, moving on, Grade 1s. For our betrayer Ameno Sagiri, unflipping perfs. As there's no subtypes to worry about, unlike Mr. Phil's deck, I can get away with using these whenever I feel like it, and not worrying about not being able to count to blast them later. So, four of those. It's a very simple grade one lineup, to be fair. Four 8Ks. Um, Imperial, Imperial Shrine Guard Sunagai. Personal aesthetic choice, this looks nicer than babies. <laughs> it does indeed. For the drop for stride, Divine Sword Amano Murakumo. Um, during Team League, I think I actually only ever called this down to boost uh, as, as a booster once and used its ability to search for a Cisno. Um, other than that, it was used to drop for stride. But very good. The last great one, personal tech choice, I was expecting Legions. So I chucked in two weather forecasts and missed. missed. Mm -hmm. um, and I was right. I got to use it in a, a in at least one game. That's pretty funny. So I was proven right on that one. And then I was a bit annoyed when I went up against the cross and I couldn't use it there. Mm. Um, it's also good in the uh, if you've got it in your hand in the early goings on because if you don't want to take any damage to if you don't want to take too much too much damage too early, it works on like it works against. Uh, grade two or less vanguards, so so it works on legions and early early game. So pretty versatile, and that's why it went in. Um, grade twos, first choice is one battle sister tart, just because that's uh, one of my favourite cards I've ever printed. Also, as Mister Kurt would say, none with gun. None with guns. None with guns. Next grade two, four, Diviner Kuroi Kiz uh, That guy. Kuroi Kizuchi. Nah. GB1, Counterboss 1, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, if this unit is boosted, you may pay the cost. If you do, draw a card. Draw for days. Draw for days. Um, to be honest, I don't actually get to use this skill as much as I'd like, but that's usually because I've drawn so many cards from other skills. Um, it's nice to have it around, though, so... You never know when an extra card is going to be very useful. Usually most of the time. So we take it. Next we have three copies of Diviner um, Shinatsu Hiko. GB1, when it attacks the Vanguard, 12k hitter. This is an aggressive deck. I'm, I'm guessing it probably comes across quite nicely. <laughs> the last grade 2 is the most infamous. Everybody loves Silent Tom! Oh yeah. But, oh yeah, you mean, oh no. Oh no. 
Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. For those of you who have had your heads under many large rocks, when this when this munchkin attacks, you cannot guard with grade zero cards from your hand. And that's hilarious. Um, it's quality. Um, it was actually kind of. It was actually how I beat the um, the guy playing the cross. I was. Uh, I, I'd got. I'd, I'd got two triggers. Put them on Silent Tom, and I said, <laughs> and I, I swung with it. It said twenty six, and I crit from Silent Tom, and he dropped two. He dropped two ten k shields, and I was like, no, 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 it's it's Silent Tom. And he was like, and he just looked at himself, looked at his cards, and went, oh god, and he realised what he's done, <laughs> and he had to take it. Ouch. It, it, it hurt. Not me, I won. <laughs> that won me the game. But Silent Tom to the face does hurt though. Silent Tom to the face is never fun. For the opponent. Unless when it is. <laughs> Just thinking back to the epic uh, mirror matches I had with Kurt the other day. <laughs> Silent Tom Wars. Nah! <laughs> anyway, moving on to the Grade 3s, we start with Supreme Heavenly Battle Deity Suzano. Because he's very, I loved. Uh, I, it was really weird for a while when the GBT01 stuff got announced. I was all like panicky and fussy about it because it's like, ah, oh, dudes, an Oracle thing tank. What the hell, man? Cool. And now I don't mind so much because actually they're really good. Um, this one is GB2. It, this GB2 skill is kind of like Amaterasu, but then some. Um, during your turn, if the number of cards in your hand is four or more, this unit gets plus five and a crit. And this is oracles. We draw cards. You, you almost never have um, less than four cards in your hand. And of course, yeah. that does do the, the, the same Amaterasu thing of at any point during your turn. So if you have two cards in your hand and do your twin drive, it still counts. So it's best to announce that you're going you're going to get the plus five on the crit. Mm -hmm. His other ability is very nice too. Counter plus one. During your turn, when your G unit strides, you may pay the cost. If you do, look at two cards from the top of your deck. Search for a card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck. Very nice. Free cards, basically. On top of being able to triple drive with the um, stride unit. Um, obviously, obviously he works brilliantly with um, the Tsukiyomi ride chain, but he also works just as, just as well without it. Uh, moving on, the main backup grade 3. We have three copies of Scarlet Witch Coco. Hence why I call the deck uh, Coconut. Uh, I mean, the immediate synergy is there. It's a classic from BTO7. Let's put it. It's no, no, no fine enough point on it. Um, if I had to ride this first, this goes. This goes to a back corner. If I ride this, if I had to ride that first, then it goes behind because that's twenty-one and a crit on GB2. Um, Scarlet Witch Coco, during your turn if you don't have <coughs> excuse me, if you don't have any cards in your soul, it gets plus three. Uh, so swings for thirteen. So normally you want to if you're if you think you're gonna be stuck with uh, Coco as the Vanguard, then stick the 8k booster behind it and swing for twenty one. Always very nice. And counterbus two when it's placed on the Vanguard circle, if the number of cards in your soul is one or less, which it will be because Lulu, you may pay the cost. If you do draw Oh I, I like how it says draw up to two cards. As if, you draw less. as if you would not draw two cards. Why would you not draw two cards? Mm. I've I've just I've always assumed it was just draw two cards. Yeah. <laughs> and I never will change that way of thinking. No. So yeah. These two equal plus three cards. And if you go second, then you stride, and gain more cards. So, very very good. They're they're a good foil for each other, Susano and uh, Coco. However, there was one other Grade Three, and uh, it was very funny. Not a lot, not a lot of people expect this, and neither will you. Um, this card is here for retiring decks and for if I go first. Say hello to my two copies of Imperial Daughter. Ah, uh -huh. yes. right. Imperial Daughter is hilarious. I don't care what you think. This card is actually really, really good. That's right. I've got two cards in my deck from Comic Style. Miss Miss being the other. This card is really good. Let me explain. 
If you go first, you ride Imperial Daughter. Lulu comes out the soul. You soul plus two, two cards. You draw a card. The, uh, the ultimate play, and this is what I do a lot, is, hang on, I'm going to grab the cards to demonstrate. You then, use Psychic Bird, put it into the soul, draw another card. Then, you, as, as you'll see on the top here, she has resta restraint, so she can't attack. Then I use her ability, which is counter plus one, choose another of your Oracle Think Tank regards and put it into your soul so that it loses restraint, so that Lulu goes back into the soul. And then, if I'm going first, I attack. Because when she attacks, during your turn, if you do not have any regards, this unit gets plus 10,000 power, plus one crit, and loses restraint. So on turn, so if I go first and I can't stride, I do this. 21 and a crit. But the reason for this, and then using the ability to put Lulu back into the soul to release restraint, is that if I ride something else later, Lulu works again. Yeah. It's a fun loop, and that's what I do, because I'm I'm lovely. Um, Mr. Kurt felt the wrath of that the, uh, the other day. If I'd been if if I'd if I'd been it, <laughs> he put down what he started to put down a card a card or two to guard it, and he was like, actually, no, nah, no, nah, I, I just can't do it, and just just hit me. Yeah. And so he took a crit, and another crit. So he pulled another one. So he took three damage on ten on, on my third turn. Mm -hmm. The annoying thing was, is I couldn't find another grade three, so I ended up losing. That sucked. Anyway, so that's the main deck there. It's very aggressive and very funny, and I love it. I'm very happy with it. Um, we move on to the strides. You'll, everyone, don't bash the 10k vanguards. Ren Element Mad, you said so. The number of times uh, at, at Team League that I had to go second. So I would ride Coco, call Lulu out, draw my three cards, and I would have a, a Cisno in my hand, or even an Imperial Daughter. I would stride, uh, ditch one of my 11k vanguards, use Madu, and when it's placed on the vanguard circle, if you have a heart card with original power of 10,000 or less, choose a grade 3 card from your drop zone, put it into your hand! Fantastic, especially if I had to ditch a Cisno, because then I'd get it back and be able to rewrite that later. Oh. Great card. Um, I'm actually considering bumping this up to 2, because it's that useful, um, because of my 10k vanguard. Um, as it is, I'll make do without it. It was a great first stride, especially. It, it basically, it's just perfect for the uh, Coco. So I'd often stride that first. Um, moving on, one Blizzard. Uh, this actually won me a game at Team League. Um, uh, Counter boss one, choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. When this unit attacks the Vanguard, you can pay the cost. If you do, this unit gets plus 5k for each face up card in your G zone until the end of that battle. This thing can hit huge numbers. Um, I have managed to have this um, on top of a Cisno, unboosted, uh, and by doing its attack, flipped over the last card in my G zone. So, um, the combined 26 plus that lot made a total attack power of, I believe it was 61,000. Wow. 7G units face up. Plus 35, yes. 61,000 before boost. With, with no boost. Nice. Um, I used this to swing for 51 at Team League, and that's what helped me win. I was given two triggers to pass and found them. Um, it was quite the thing. So that's... That's good late game. That's all I use it for. Um, I don't think I've ever used it to force GB2 out of Cisno straight away. I don't think I ever will either. Um, next two cards are two copies of Soaring Auspicious Beast Kirin. Um, that's good to stride first if I've gone if I've had to ride Cisno first, because um, obviously Cisno's ability works. And then if this hits, it does the same thing again. Look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your deck. Very nice. So this is a good card. Um, it's, it's all dependent on what card I, uh, what my grade three is at the time. But always the second stride, pretty much without fail, is the playset of Sword Deity of the Thunderbreak 
Takami Kazuchi. Uh, counter pass 2. Choose a face down copy of itself and turn it face up. Uh, if the number of face up cards in your G zone is two or more, look at four cards from the top of your deck. Search for up to two cards. Oh no, search for two cards from among them. Put them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order, and then you can't use the ability for the rest of uh, that turn. Not that you need to, because now your hands become a lot more massive. This card is um, wonderful if you've had to deal with a pretty hefty turn uh, attack from the previous turn. Um, yeah. Draw for days. Draw, draw all the cards, ever. Um... I had only one game that went to time that I would have decked out on, the, on my following turn anyway at Team League, and that's only because I deliberately tried to push for push for game. Hmm. That was a very deliberate thing I attempted to do. Um, didn't work. Then. Didn't work only because I didn't have any. I, I only had one trigger left in the deck, so I tried. I tried, um, but the deck overall actually did me very well. Um, like Mr. Phil, we. Uh, in, in our in our six rounds, I won four games. So, um, given that I thought I I had the worst deck and was going to have the worst record of the three of us, I've actually uh, I was very surprised and was very <laughs> very proud of my silly little uh, deck of grossness. And uh, so that's it. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. And tomorrow's video is going to be our uh, long weird video of footage from our actual day of travelling and being in Cardiff. Mm -hmm. That's going to be quite a thing. I'm going to apologise in advance for all the random crazy schnizzle. <laughs> um, so I hope you look forward, uh, look forward to that and enjoy it. L let me know what you think of my deck in the comments and let me know how what you think of my crazy tech choices and, uh, and, 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 and how gross it is. <laughs> uh, so thank you for watching. Uh, goodbye internet people. Goodbye.